Now, most people will be completely happy with the DTX Pro. It does most of the things that the DTX Pro X does, it just doesn't have the, the more professional uh, routing, uh, individual outputs, etc., that the Pro X does. So most people are quite happy with the Pro. It's got left and right outputs. It's got most of the same sounds. It's got most of the uh, same kits. But the Pro X does stand out for numerous different reasons. One, it has more sounds in it. It has more velocity layers to the cymbals and the hi-hats, so there's more detail in the sounds. There's more kits inside the Pro X. Uh, it has individual outputs. It has Bluetooth. There's live set functionality, which we'll talk about later. And it has more trigger settings. So even though they share an awful lot of software and firmware, they are different. You can take a Pro Voice, save it onto a USB drive, and load it into the Pro X, and it will sound automatically better because there's just those more samples, more layers in the Pro X samples. But you can't take a Pro X kit, save it onto a USB drive, and load it into the Pro. That does not work because there's more features on the Pro X which the Pro doesn't have. So there is a big difference. Um, the Pro X is obviously much more orientated towards the serious user, but most people, especially if they're connecting it up to a computer or uh, they want to practice, the Pro would be just fine. The modules themselves, this is the Pro, 14 pad inputs, MIDI out, Master outputs just left and right, USB ports. There's one auxiliary input and there is one headphone output. But the Pro X, again, it has 14 pad inputs. This has MIDI in and out, USB ports again, two auxiliary inputs, one on the front, one on the back, eight individual outputs plus the master left and right, so you have 10 outputs to play with and it has two headphone outputs. One is a mini jack, one is a quarter inch. Now this is particularly useful if you are a teacher and you need to teach on headphones because both the student and the teacher can have different headphones. Plus, it's much more easy to use your in-ears or your headphones and you don't have to find an adapter. You can just use the headphone socket which fits whatever you're using. As far as the user interface is concerned, the Pro X is much simpler, so the Pro, everything is done through the menu button, and you have almost pretty much exactly the same amount of control as the Pro X, but it's all done through that one button, and then you have different layers, different screens. The Pro X has these two controllers which allow very quick and easy access into all the trickier parts of the, uh, of the module, all the more in-depth stuff, and it, you can access stuff incredibly quickly. So that's why the Pro X is more aimed at serious users, because if you're on stage and you suddenly decide you want to route something to a different output, unlikely, but it might happen, it's much quicker and easier to do it on the Pro X. The Pro X mode select knob allows you to move between uh, the main functions, so the kit, the click, uh, the trigger settings, the recorder, and the live set, which we'll talk about later. The fader select knob allows you to change the use of the seven rotary faders at the bottom. Now, these are very, very useful. So, for example, if I have it set up here with the mixer lit up, these are my global mix settings, okay? So if I want to turn down all the kicks, I can just do that here. But I can also change the instruments from here. You can see on the screen, I can change the tuning from here. I can change the muffling from here. I can also change the effects from here. So that's FX Send 1, FX Send 2, I can change the transient amount uh, for the transient attack, the transient release. This is all to do with the transient controller. I can change the insert effects and the routing. I can change the master EQ and I can also click. Uh, I can also change the MIDI CC numbers for these controllers, which we'll talk about later because that's incredibly, incredibly useful. 